In this video, I'm going to show you how to complete the different requirements for the CEA Revit test. So the first thing when you open up Revit is to start with a the architectural template. So I'm going to go over here to New, and uh, it's asking me if I want to use the construction template. I need to change that to architectural and hit OK. Things should open up in front of you. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put in some walls and create a square building. So I mean, in the architectural ribbon, use the wall tab, and uh, I can just click anywhere to start and move over by um, 10 feet, and I can even eyeball that, or I can type in 10 to make that 10 feet. Um, hit tab to continue, and just click to continue. Go up, make that 10, and uh, then I can uh, finish the square. The thing though is, is that the, sorry, that's 10 feet wall height. We want our outside dimensions to be 25 feet, which is no problem because I wanna show you how to change these dimensions. So I'm gonna hit escape a few times. I do that frequently to get out of whatever command I was using. I'm gonna click on one of the sides of the wall and then a dimension will come up. This dimension here is lined up to the uh, middle of the wall, to the center line of the wall. Um, in our instructions here, it says that we want the outside dimensions to be 25 feet. So I'm going to click this little toggle here, and uh, each time I click it, it'll toggle between the inside, the middle, and the outside. I'm going to line this up with the outside of the walls, and then I will change this number here to 25. I'll hit enter. And so there's 25 feet. Because this is a small number here in the way that it's represented, I know it's a temporary dimension. I need to make it a permanent dimension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the picture of the dimension right there. And now it's a permanent dimension. I can take this one step farther and uh, actually lock it so that um, it, when I do things inside of the house, if I were to put walls interior, it won't... Uh, um, change this outer dimension. So I'm going to click on the actual dimension line. This little padlock shows up and I click it to lock. All right, so my outside dimension is now 25 feet and I've made it a permanent dimension, which means that it will show up on my drawing. I'm now going to click on the other perpendicular wall. I'll click on those toggles to make them aligned with the outside. I'll change this to 25, hit enter, and uh, then I can. Um, click on this to make it permanent and this to um, lock it and uh, I have two outer dimensions that are 25 feet all right so I'm going to just take a peek at what this looks like in 3d and then we can continue on so I hit the little 3d house up at the top here and I just have a box if I want to change how this looks in terms of um, being able to see the exterior down on this lower bunch of quick tools um, the one that just looks like a box is what's going to allow me to change the um, way that this is represented on my screen. So I'm going to change it to consistent colors or realistic. And I see that uh, it's kind of just this boring um, default gray. And so if I click on one of my walls, I notice that the wall is just, uh, it put in this basic wall generic. My instructions here say that my outside wall should be made of brick. I have a bunch of options here that allow for brick walls. Um, I'm just going to choose one. Let's do um, brick on metal stud. And um, several of these would have worked as long as it has a brick exterior. And so I click on that to make it brick on metal stud. Um, I'm going to show you a trick on, oh, it should have changed it. Yeah, it did. So it's not showing here, which means my wall is probably inside out. I'll show you how to fix that in a moment. But right now I have three other walls to change. If I mouse over one of them and then hit tab, all of the similar um, elements in my view will be selected and then I can single click to actually select it and now I didn't have to go around and click 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 all of those so just mouse over it hit tab to select all similar and then grab that so I go ahead and change this one to brick on metal stud and I don't know what it's doing here constraints are not satisfied let's uh, let's just remove the constraints I don't know what the heck happened there um, I'm going to go back into my floor plan. So I have my project browser here. I'll go to level one, the floor plan. And uh, one of my dimensions got goofy. So let's, uh, um, in order to change that dimension, I'm actually going to delete it um, because it's a permanent dimension. And um, if I actually just click on the number right now, I won't be able to change it. 
I can change what's displayed, but I don't change the actual dimension. So I'm going to click that whole dimension, delete it, click on one of the perpendicular walls to where I want the dimension to go. It's popping up at the top here. And then I just start all over with putting that dimension lined up with the outside. So it's saying that it's 25 feet and change. Let's just make that 25 even. We'll click the dimension picture to make it a permanent dimension. And then we'll click the dimension line so the padlock shows up and then we can lock that. There is our 25 feet and 25 feet. Um, and now what I wanna do is make sure that these walls actually have the brick on the outside. If I single click on one of them, I see that those two arrows um, which show that that side is the exterior. They've actually gone inside out and they are on the inside. So I'll click on those to make them the outside. And I'll just go around and do that to each of the four walls there. And there we go. Okay, so now they should all be all the outside. Let's go back to our 3D view. We can just go to this tab here. All right, we're getting there. It's looking much better. So we have walls that are 25 feet to the outside. Let's make them 10 feet tall now. So I'm going to... Um, actually, let's go into the elevation views, and in the elevation views, we have level one and level two. Um, I'm going to click on level one, and one of the things that I need to do is to rename my levels. Um, where do I have that? So elevations renamed to floor and roof. So let's call this one floor, and let's call this one roof. And then there are, so I, it just so happens that my roof is already at 10, and that's actually what was required on my test here. So I can leave that at 10. If it was required to be something else, you could just click on it and change that pretty easily. Um, and then what I'm going to do is there are a bunch of ways that I could change those walls. One way would be just to click on them and grab that toggle and bring it down so that it's locked, it, so that it's aligned with the roof level. And then, of course, you have the lock option there. Um, another way would be if you remember the mouse over, hit tab to select all, and then click to select all. Um, in my um, wall properties here, um, my base constraint is the floor, but my top constraint right now says unconnected. What if I change my top constraint to roof? And then there's two ways to accept something that you change in the properties window. You can either hit apply here, or you can actually just mouse out and uh, that will um, apply that change all right so i think that we're doing good there um, let's go back to 3d we're getting there looks good all right so create square, square building 10 feet walls elevations renamed outside dimensions are 25 feet um, outside walls brick windows on three sides windows are easy um, you can do that in the floor plan you can do that in the 3d plan They're pretty straightforward let's just uh do that in the uh, 3D plan because then we can see what's happening. There's no requirements for what the windows look like. Let's just throw them in. One there. Ooh, that zoomed in pretty quickly, pretty pretty severely. Let's throw one there. And it's I'm not even worried about where it's placed. I'm just uh, trying to get some points on this test. And we'll throw one in there. All right, windows on three sides. Check. Doors on one side. All right, let's go back over to the other side. And then we're going to hit escape a few times to uh, stop placing windows. Let's go over to the doors. Let's choose a cute door. I don't know what these are. Let's just pick one, throw it in. Door is placed. Check. Um, it says it has to be outside facing and the windows have to be outside facing. Let's double check that our windows and doors are all outside facing. So if you go into your plan view and you click on there, notice how it has that same two, check, two arrows. I'm going to click on those two arrows and flip them around. So now my window is properly um, situated so that the window is actually on the inside and then the, the part that's supposed to um, be exposed to the rain and wind is on the outside. And uh, there we go. Our windows and doors are all outside facing. So those two little arrows are facing the outside, which means they're outside facing. Um, roof has a slope. Oh, let's do a roof. Okay, I like to do roofs in 3D. Um, let's go into the 3D. We go to the roof tool and it says you want to create the roof on the roof. Yes, that sounds like a great idea. Let's do that. And here is what we want to do. We need the roof to slope um, to three of the walls and to not slope towards one of them. So we'll have one gable end. Um, we're also told that the roof overhang should be three feet. So let's start off before we do anything by making this three feet and uh, the defined slope is checked. So let's do the three sides that are um, going to slope towards the edges. So we'll do one here 
So that little pink triangle, that means that it defines the slope, so it'll slope towards that side. Um, this one here defines slope, has that little triangle, and this one here, okay? So before we place the fourth side of the roof, we're gonna uncheck define slope, and then we can go over here and click on this to place it, hit the green check mark, and we are good to go. And look at that, we have a kind of a half decent roof. Um, so let's uh, just look at this and, and there seems to be something a little funky with this wall here. That's actually fairly easy to fix. Let's click on the wall. And uh, whenever you click on a wall to modify it, you're gonna be given this option here, attach top base. Um, let's click on that. And then uh, you actually have to do one more step here. So you've said that that wall needs to attach the top base. You just have to tell it what the top base is. So make sure to click on the roof or whatever you want it to extend to. And uh, voila, there we go. We are pretty close to being done with building the house. Roof slopes to three walls, roof overhang is three feet. All right, let's get to our A-shaped drawing. I think the basics are in there. So we're gonna go over to sheets. And if we click on it right now, we don't have any sheets. So let's right mouse click and go to new sheet. When we go to new sheet, it wants us to do this E sheet, which is a crazy huge sheet. And uh, we need to do a size um, A. And so we go up to the load at the top of the new sheet thing and, and scroll all the way down to title blocks, open up the title blocks, choose our A, which is like a normal eight and a half by 11, hit open, hit OK. And so make sure that that's selected and hit OK. So that is the sheet size that we want, looks great. All right, we need one 3D view that shows the brick exterior, door and roof shape. So let's go look what our brick exterior looks like before we drag it into the drawing. So let's go back into our 3D. And so it says that it needs to show the brick exterior, the door and the roof shape. So we wanna orient this before we put it into the um, drawing so that it meets the criteria. Down at the bottom here, we have these crop tools. The crop tool with the light bulb just shows whether or not the line defining crop is visible or not. This crop tool um, that has the X on it right now just says, is that crop applied or not? So let's just see what the crop lines are at right now. And they are super duper huge. So we're gonna tuck those right in. Let's pull that in, let's pull that in. And so this is something that you should always do before you put your drawing into the template. So let's pull all of those in nicely. And yes, we do want it up, um, to have the crop applied, but we also want to hide the crop line. So the one with the light bulb, the crop with the light bulb, um, make sure to turn that off before you dump it into your drawing. All right, this is ready to go in the drawing. Let's go back into the drawing, and then we go over into our project browser and just drag that right in. And uh, let's put the 3D view down here. That looks fine. And then you can play around with the scale a little bit if you think that's way too big. Um, the way to change that would be go back into the 3D view. So you can either do that through your project browser or this tab that's opened up up here. And then this scale here is how you're going to change how it looks in the drawing. So right now it's 1 8th. And so if you want it to be a little smaller, you'll actually go down on this scale. And so I could make it, let's say, 3 30 seconds. And then I go back into the drawing and look at it and say, hey, maybe that's better. Um, you need to choose that based on what you're laying out and what all needs to go into your drawing. So either of those would have probably been fine for this one. If you find that this line underneath is ridiculously long, don't try to modify it in the drawing. Just delete your 3D view and drag in a new one, and it'll resize that line that's on the bottom there and make it fit a little bit better. All right, so we have one 3D view. Yes, we need one floor plan view with dimensions cropped view, but crop lines not visible. So let's go into our floor plan and make sure that it's ready for all of that. So we go into our floor plan. It has the dimensions and they are correct. And uh, now let's look at our crop stuff. So if we turn on our crop, it is way out here. So if we put it in right now, all of these uh, elevation markers will be showing and uh, we don't need that. So we're going to um, take that whole crop, tuck it in nice and close here. And then um, once we are happy that it's, that it's properly cropped, we'll turn off the crop lines. And then we go into our sheet 